Let us for a few moments meditate on the Divine Master for peace and joy. Shanti 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 Hariyom Tatsat Om Sthapakaya Jadhamasya Sarvadham Swarupine Avatar Varishtaya Ramakrishnayate nama Asato Gamaya Tamaso Majodar Gamaya Pratyoramamritangamaya Om Shanti 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 Let us offer our salutations to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the Supreme God incarnate. Let us pray to Him to remove all our ignorance. to take us to the spiritual goal, to experience liberation in this very life. Sri Ramakrishna said that Those who are trying, practicing spiritual disciplines, will all come to me the floodgates of spirituality have been kept open. If people miss this opportunity, then they will have to wait for a long, long time. These are the words of Sri Ramakrishna. Incarnations come not for one particular community or country. They come for the whole humanity. That's the beauty of incarnation. Thereby, people are made to know God loves all the beings All the beings belong to Him. That concept must be properly understood. We must expand ourselves. We must have that wide dimension in our (coughs) spiritual thinking. No room for any kind of narrowness or fanaticism, or dogmatism. No. When you come to incarnation, you will be get rid of all these limitations, obstructing your spiritual growth. So, Sri Ramakrishna gives practical teachings. He meant what he said. He is giving these teachings not for the sake of simply making fun or simply making theories. No. Not at all. Every word, every sentence, every idea given by Sri Ramakrishna 
is is like a mantra it has tremendous mystical power we will understand the significance of sri ram krishna's teachings if we have little purification of heart purification of heart is important purity of mind is necessary to interpret spiritual ideas <coughs> to experience heavenly peace and joy so all the teachings of shri ram krishna are pointing to this in the course of his teachings he said he who has seen god retains his i i am so and so only in name this is a important characteristic of a realized person people as soon as they come in contact with holy men of such spiritual stature they get fascinated towards such holy men on account of their simplicity and childlike behavior that is they are totally free from ego no evil can be done by that i retained by a holy man after the realization of the parmatma shri ram krishna tells it is a mere appearance like the mark left on the coconut tree by its branch the branch has fallen off only the mark remains so beautiful analogy so shri ram krishna is pointing out directly what is obstructing our spiritual growth what is it that obstructs our spiritual unfoldment though we want it we can't have it why it is because shri ram krishna says we have that ego which is a stumbling block on our spiritual path so shri ram krishna tells you to give up the wicked ego he terms it as a wicked ego then again he clarifies the point one doesn't have to renounce the ego that makes one feel i am the servant of god i am his devotee see one doesn't develop the divine ego as long as one retains the wicked ego so shri ram krishna is now making distinction between various types of ego we are all being played by our ego deluded by egoism 
Man regards himself as very important. He becomes so sensitive, he becomes hurt for everything. He doesn't want to believe in the existence of God. Once I read in a newspaper in Chicago Tribune, somewhere in America they had a conference, several hundreds attended that conference to debate whether God exists or not. Then the vote was taken. When the vote was taken, they all voted for the statement that God doesn't exist. <laughs> so, existence of God depends upon the vote taken by these people in the conference. That is the effect of the wicked ego. Sri Ramakrishna has clearly pointed out. So he said, long before this conference held, Sri Ramakrishna has made a remark, these people don't believe God. He never seriously considered how little he can understand with his intellect. A man of such wicked ego. Whether the ego dies or not, it has to be observed by the person himself. He need not have to ask somebody else about his uh, progress in whatever way. When the ego dies, all troubles cease. As long as we are egotistic, so long is God at a distance. Sri Ramakrishna explained this by an illustration. As long as the manager is in the storeroom, the head of the house does not go there. If anybody asks something of him, he directs that person to the manager. Go and speak to manager. He doesn't want to bother about things. So, to pinpoint, it is this ego that binds one in Maya. Maya means delusion. There is no escape until you feel, not I, not I, but Thou, my Lord. Until you cherish this feeling in your heart, you cannot be free from the effects of the ego. You can't have real peace. There are many sages, rishis, who used to devote their full time in practices, in meditation, prayers, and so on. There is an illustration of the great sage Narada, 
probably you must have heard narada bhakti sutra aphorisms of devotion it's really a wonderful book those who want to follow the path of devotion bhakti yoga they should read narada bhakti sutras everything is defined clearly what is what so these aphorisms were given by the great sage narada now how did he attain such devotion and knowledge he attained that wonderful devotion and knowledge of brahman by serving holy people what does it mean what do you attain by serving the holy people ego is destroyed ego is destroyed through service of course you must have this concept before you start any service otherwise you will become more egoistic than before everything depends upon the concept be aware of what you are doing then you will have wonderful result and at no circumstances give up your spiritual practices if you give up the practices of japam and meditation and engage yourself solely in work as most people in america do egoism is bound to arise in you and you will become the source of quarrels and disharmony so sri ramakrishna points out if you want to enjoy the glory of spirituality renunciation is the first importance it destroys all ego without dispassion towards the world faith and love do not grow you must have dispassion to lose the ego in god is dispassion now people generally they tend to work it's very easy for them to work rather than to sit and do serious contemplation but then unless work is accompanied by meditation japa and other spiritual practices its very spirit is lost then one forgets it is the lord's work and not his own egotism and pride come and instead of being purified by the work the heart becomes defiled Swami Shivananda ji one of the direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna said know it for certain that if one goes on performing one's duties and with the sincere belief that one is doing God's work one can never suffer spiritually if you do the duties in this spirit we are always safe safe god protects such a one forever but 
the fall comes as soon as egoism and attachment creep in so you have to be fully aware so that is why we always prescribe meditation and japa holy association why because meditation and japa regularly done they help in maintaining a balance balance is very important and a little intrusion by pride and egotism is not a thing to be worried about for god himself will put you under the circumstances necessary for the wiping out of this little defect as for pride and egotism this can come even to the man engaged in austerities in solitude he may then think that he has become a big ascetic gone the moment pride comes to you you are finished always you must be watchful about the changes in yourself if you are true to yourself if your thoughts and actions are in accord with each other pride and egotism can never assail you whether you are engaged in spiritual practice or or service to god so shri ramakrishna tells you that you must have diligence as long as you have the notion of ego swami premananda ji another direct disciples of shri ramakrishna he said it's a very significant statement he said shri ramakrishna did not make us great he made us nobodies you also have to become nobodies why put all vanity and all sense of ego that's the meaning of becoming nobody look at the life of nag mahashe if you have not read please read that life most wonderful life if you want to know whether such a person was there here is the case nag mahashe totally freed from ego there was not the least trace of ego in him referring to nag mahashe a great devotee of shri ramakrishna girish chandra ghosh another household disciple of shri ramakrishna said referring to nag mahashay and swami vivekananda maya tried to bind nag mahashay and vivekananda in her net she tried but failed miserably why because nag mahashay was noted for his total dedication and devotion was noted for complete completely selfless free from any trace of ego he became smaller than the smallest so that maya's net could not hold him what about vivekananda he grew bigger and bigger he became one with the infinite and the net was too small to bind him here are the great ideals before us setting set before us by shri ramakrishna one is nagmashay and this is vivekananda who came to america preached vedanta passing through all sorts of hardships 
So take them. Follow their footsteps. You will see how wonderful you will be. Always remember, <coughs> always remember, the Lord is the doer. If ever the idea that I am the doer enters into your head, what happens? The Lord instantly flies away. He doesn't stay there. All efforts then will be in vain. Therefore, you will have to be careful. Let not the unripe ego ever enter your heart. Pray that you may only be the instrument in the hands of the Lord through His grace. Then only will you become a real karma yogi. Karma yogi. Yoga. What a fine term it is. To become a yogi. How much cautions you have to follow. Let the strong wind of dispassion Rise in your minds that the trees of desires be uprooted. Then, even as birds fly from the shelter of trees before a strong wind, will the ignorance of selfishness, jealousy, hatred and egotism take flight from your hearts. Then shall peace follow and fill your lives even as calm follows the storm. Finally, referring to this uh, topic, another direct disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, his name Swami Ramakrishna Anand. All these disciples were intensely trained by Sri Ramakrishna, each one. He trained all these disciples and gave them to the world, gave them to the humanity. Sri Ramakrishna and these disciples were the contributions to the world. He said, his definition of egotism <coughs> is the attraction towards the world means egotism. Well, I have dealt with this particular point which is very important in our life. Page 410, Master said, Recite that part also, obtain from him the love of God. Mahima recited, O Brahman, O my child, Cease from practicing further penances. Hasten to Shankara, the ocean of heavenly wisdom. Obtain from him the love of God, the pure love praised by devotees, which snaps in twain the shackles that bind you to the world. Sri Ramakrishna said, Yes, Shankara will bestow the love of God. Mahima said, One who is free from bondage is the eternal Shiva. Master said, Shame, hatred, fear, hesitation, these are the shackles. What do you say? Mahima said, Yes, sir. And also the desire to conceal and shrinking before praise. Master said, there are two signs of knowledge. First, an unshakable buddhi. That means intellect. No matter how many sorrows, afflictions, dangers and obstacles one may be faced with, one's mind does not undergo any change. It is like the blacksmith's anvil 
which receives constant blows from the hammer and still remains unshaken. And second, manliness, very strong grit. If lust and anger injure a man, he must renounce them once for all. If a tortoise once tucks in its limbs, it won't put them out again, though you may cut it into four pieces. To Thakur Dada and the others, Sri Ramakrishna said, there are two kinds of renunciation, intense and feeble. Feeble renunciation is a slow process. One moves in a slow rhythm. Intense renunciation is like the sharp edge of a razor. It cuts the bondage of Maya easily and at once. One farmer labors for days to bring water from the lake to his field. But his efforts are futile because he has no grit. Another farmer, after laboring for two or three days, takes a vow and says, I will bring water into my field today and not till then will I go home. He puts aside all thoughts of his bath or his meal. He labors the whole day and feels great joy when in the evening he finds water entering his field with a murmuring sound. Then he goes home and says to his wife, Now give me some oil, I shall take my bath. After finishing his bath and his meal, he lies down to sleep with a peaceful mind. A certain woman said to her husband, So and so has developed a spirit of great dispassion for the world, but I don't see anything of this sort in you. He has sixteen wives, he is giving them up one by one. The husband with a towel on his shoulder was going to the lake for his bath. He said to his wife, you are crazy, he won't be able to give up the world. Is it ever possible to renounce bit by bit? I can renounce. Look, here I go. He didn't stop even to settle his household affairs. He left home just as he was towel on his shoulder and went away. That is intense renunciation. There is another kind of renunciation called Markat Vairagya. Markat means monkey, monkey renunciation. A man harrowed by distress at home puts on an ochre robe and goes away to Benares. For many days he does not send home any news of himself then he writes to his people, Don't be worried about me, I have got a job here. There is always trouble in family life. The wife may be disobedient, perhaps the husband earns only 20 rupees a month, he has not the means to perform the rice eating ceremony for his baby, he can't educate his son, the house is dilapidated, the roof leaks, and he has not the money to repair it. Therefore, when the youngsters come here, Sri Ramakrishna said, I ask them whether they have anyone at home. To Mahima he said, Why should householders renounce the world? What great troubles the wandering monks pass through the wife of a certain man said to him, You want to renounce the world? Why? You will have to beg morsels from eight different homes, but here you get all your, your food at one place. Isn't that nice? Wandering monks, while searching for Sadavrata, an eating place where food is supplied free to monks and beggars may have to go six miles out of their way. I have seen them travelling along the regular road after their pilgrimage to Puri 
and making a detour to find an eating place. You are leading a householder's life, that's very good. It is like fighting from a fort. There are many disadvantages in fighting in an open field. So many dangers too. Bullets may hit you. But one should spend some time in solitude and attain knowledge. Then one can lead the life of a household. Janaka lived in the world after attaining knowledge. When you have gained it, you may live anywhere. Then nothing matters. Mahima said, Sir, why does a man become deluded by worldly objects? Master said, It is because he lives in their midst without having realized God. Man never succumbs to delusion after he has realized God. The moth no longer enjoys darkness if it has once seen the light. To be able to realize God, one must practice absolute continence. Sages like Shukadev are examples of an Urdhareta, a man of unknown, a man of unbroken and complete continence. Their chastity was absolutely unbroken. There is another class who previously have had discharges of semen but who later on have controlled them. A man controlling the seminal fluid for 12 years develops a special power. He grows a new inner nerve called the nerve of memory. Through that nerve he remembers all. He understands all. Loss of semen impairs the strength but it does not injure one if one loses it in a dream. That semen one gets from food. What remains after nocturnal discharge is enough. But one must not know a woman. The semen that remains after nocturnal discharge is very refined. The Lahas kept jars of molasses in their house. Every jar had a hole in it. After a year they found that the molasses had crystallized like sugar candy. The unnecessary watery part had leaked out through the hole. A sannyasi must absolutely a sannyasi must absolutely renounce woman. You are already involved, but that doesn't matter. A sannyasi must not look even at the picture of a woman, but this is too difficult for an ordinary man. Sarigama Padani are the seven notes of the scale in music. It is not possible to keep your voice on knee a long time. To lose semen is extremely harmful for a sannyasi. Therefore, he must live so carefully that he will not have to see the form of a woman. He must keep himself away from a woman, even if she is a devotee of God. It is injurious for him to look even at the picture of a woman. He will lose semen in a dream, if not in the waking state. He is referring to the ordinary type of people. It is true. Once you are trying to control, even little distraction drags you down. That's why Sri Ramakrishna is cautioning. So he is giving instructions to the men referring to women. So the women should take it referring to men. The idea is same. A sannyasi may have control over his senses, but to set an example to mankind, he should not talk with women. But it is not possible in America. <laughs> <laughs> he must not talk to one very long, even if she is a devotee of God. Because it has got so many consequences. Too much familiarity may 
bring closeness which may lead to fall that's the caution if a person is not uh, to worry about that that's a different matter so living as a he is shri ramakrishna is giving this uh, ideal you must know he is speaking to the people in india who are brought up in that culture and tradition living as a sanyasi is like observing the ekadashi without drinking even a drop of water there are two other ways of observing the day you may eat fruit or take luchi and curry with the luchi and curry you may also take slices of bread soaked in milk or laugh smiling absolute fasting is not possible for you once i saw krishna kishore eating luchi and curry on an ekadashi day i said to hrude hrudu i want to observe krishna kishore's ekadashi i laugh and so i did one day i ate my fill the next day i had to fast <laughs> left the devotee who had gone to the panchavati to visit the hat yogi came back master addressing them well what do you think of him i dare say you have measured him with your own tape sri ramakrishna saw that very few of the devotees were willing to give money to the hat yogi master said you don't like a sadhu if you have to give him money rajendra mitra draws a salary of 800 rupees a month he had been to alahabad to see the kumbh mela i asked him well what kind of sadhus did you see at the fair rajendra said i did not find any very great sadhu there i noticed one it is true but even he accepted money i say to myself if no one gives money to a sadhu then how will he free feed himself there is no collection plate here therefore all come and i say to myself alas they love their money let them have it the master rested a while a devotee sat on the end of the small couch and gently stroked his feet the master said to him softly that which is formless again has form one should believe in the form of for forms of god also by meditating on kali the aspirant realizes god as kali next he finds that the form merges in the indivisible absolute that which is indivisible satchidanand is very the kali shri ramakrishna was sitting on the semi circular porch west of his room talking with mahima and other devotees about the hatha yogi the talk drifted to ram prasanna the son of krishna kishore the master was fond of the young man master said ram prasanna roams about aimlessly the other day he came here and sat in the room but he did not speak a word he pressed his nostrils with his fingers practicing pranayama i offered him something to eat but he wouldn't take it on another occasion i had asked him to sit by me he squatted on the floor placing one leg upon the other he was rather discourteous to captain i weep at his mother's suffering to mahima he said ram prasanna asked me to speak to you entered the room with several friends one of whom was a physician mani asked the master about his injured arm the doctor did not approve of the medicine prescribed by pratap mazumdar the master said to him why should you say that pratap is no fool suddenly latu cried out ah oh, the medicine bottle has dropped and broken it was not at dusk the master seated on the couch was talking to m mahima charan was on the semi circular porch engaged in a loud discussion of the scriptures with the physician friend of mani sen shri ramakrishna heard it and with a smile said to m there he is delivering himself that is a characteristic of rajas 
it stimulates the desire to lecture and to show off one's scholarship but sattva makes one introspective it makes one hide one's virtues but i must say that mahima is a grand person he takes such delight in spiritual talk other entered the room saluted the master and sat by em's side he had not come for the past few days master said hello why haven't you come all these days other said sir i have been busy with so many things i had to attend a conference of the school committee and various other meetings shri ram krishna said so you completely lost yourself in schools and meetings and forget everything else forgot everything else other said everything else was hidden away in a corner of my mind how is your arm master answered just look it is not at healed i have been taking medicine prescribed by pratap after time the master suddenly said to other look here all these are unreal meetings school office and everything else god alone is the substance and all else is illusory one should worship god with one's whole mind other sat without speaking a word master said all else is illusory the this moment the body is and the next moment it is not one must make haste to worship god but you don't have to renounce everything live in the world the way the tortoise does the tortoise roams about in the water but keeps its eggs on land its whole mind is on the eggs what a nice state of mind captain has developed he looks like a rishi when he is seated to perform worship he performs the aarti with lighted camphor and recites beautiful hymns when he rises from his seat after finishing the worship his eyes are swollen from emotion as if bitten by ants besides he always devotes himself to the study of the sacred books such as the gita and the bhagavad gita bhagavata once i used one or two english words before him and that made him angry he said english educated people are profane after a while adhar said humbly to the master sir we have not been to our place for a long time the drawing room smells worldly and everything else appears to be deep in darkness the master was deeply touched by these words of his devotee he suddenly stood up and blessed him and adhar in an ecstatic mood touching their heads and hearts in a voice choked with love the master said i look upon you as narayana himself you are indeed my own mahima charan entered the room master said to mahima what i said about aspirants practicing continence is true without chastity one cannot assimilate these teachings once a man said to chaitanya you give the devotees so much instruction why don't they make much progress chaitanya said they they dissipate their powers in the company of women that's why they cannot assimilate spiritual instruction if one keeps water in a leaky jar the water escapes little by little through the lake mahima and the other devotees remained silent after time mahima said please pray to god for us that we may acquire the necessary strength master said be on your guard even now it is difficult no doubt to check the torrent in the rainy season but a great deal of water has gone out if you build the embankment now it will stand that completes the chapter 20 chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench your that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within o name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart 
opening its cup to knowledge of thyself. O self, drowned deep in the waves of his bliss, tasting his nectar at every step, bathing in his name that bath for weary souls. Various are thy names, O Lord, in each and every name thy power resides. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy, how huge then is my wretchedness, who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O oh, my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass, be patient and forbearing like a tree, take no honor to thyself, give honor to all, chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue, the playthings of lust or the toys of fame. As many times as I may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy, consider him as dust beneath thy feet. Oh, how I long for the day when an instant's separation from thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns away with its desire, and the world without thee is a heartless white. Prostrate at thy feet let me be, in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor the bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence. Though it Tears my soul asunder. O thou who steals the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt, for thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good. May all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous, may the virtuous attain tranquility, may the tranquil be free from bonds, may the freed make others free. May good betide all people, may the sovereign righteously rule the earth. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour rain in time. May the earth be blessed with crops. May all countries be freed from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied. For he being praised, the whole universe becomes praised. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.